Hi there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. In this video, you'll learn about the puborectalis and pubococcygeus muscle and how it relates to constipation and a simple postural alignment exercise to help your patients. Key questions to ask in your intake. Use your Bristol stool chart. What is the shape of the bowel movement? Are there any hemorrhoids or fissures? What is the frequency of bowel movement? Do you strain to have a bowel movement? Do you push to urinate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are all really good questions to kind of get a sense of if there are muscles involved in the constipation. Um, so quickly talking about the pelvic floor and how it relates to constipation, the puborectalis and the pubococcygeus muscles are kind of the two key muscles here. The puborectalis is a muscle that wraps around the anal sphincter or rectum. And when it is hypertonic or tight, it kinks off the rectum um, and does not allow stool to come out as it should. So then you're seeing kind of like ribbon-like, pebble-like stool because that muscle is not able to relax and straighten out the rectum. Instead, it's all kinked off, not able to allow the stool to go through. Um, the interesting thing about the puborectalis and pubococcygeus muscle is it attaches on the pubic bone and then goes around that rectum and then connects onto the coccyx. So often when we're sitting all day long and we are like slouched, not good posture, the sacrum and the coccyx tucks under and all those muscles get shortened. So it's not a surprise that a lot of people nowadays have pelvic floor dysfunction and constipation related to pelvic floor tightness. Um, an easy thing to assess for in your clinical practice is for that paradoxical muscle contraction. So if you insert your finger and it doesn't need to be rectally, you can find this muscle vaginally. If you insert your finger, um, you're gonna go straight back, whole finger is pretty much inserted and you are going to ask your patient to do a gentle valsava like they're having a bowel movement and you'll be able to sense, are they actually doing it? And you feel that bulge or that release of the muscle or are they contracting? So a lot of times Kathy and I in our clinical practice will ask the patient to bear down or to do a bulge and they actually do a contraction and that's called a paradoxical contraction. So they think that they are releasing those muscles when in fact they're actually tightening them. Um, so obviously that's gonna make it tough for the rectum to release stool because that muscle will again kink off the, the uh, rectum. And another really important piece is to look at their abdominal muscles. If there's a lot of high tone or tension in the abdominal muscles, that can also contribute. You have your sigmoid colon um, right underneath the rectus abdominis. So if there are a lot of trigger points there, that will also contribute and it impairs the, their ability to take a nice diaphragmatic breath, which Kathy's now gonna talk about how important um, diaphragmatic breathing is for um, constipation patients. Yes, thank you, Melissa. So diaphragmatic breathing is so important because when we take a breath with our diaphragm, the pelvic floor drops. So releasing the puborectalis is, linked with diaphragmatically breathing and getting that pelvic floor to drop mm -hmm. or to release because it will release or soften all those muscles around the rectum and allow for the passage of stool. Mm -hmm. So finding your sitting bones, we often ask people to just sit on their hands. And if you sit on your hands, you really can feel your sitting bones. And just you notice are you sitting equally on your right and your left sitting bones, your ischial tuberosities? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you, it's fascinating when you watch people sit on their sitting bones, you watch their whole alignment just elongate up. So the sitting bones, when you have equal weight distribution on them, they're able to widen, the pelvic floor can drop 
and then the rectum can actually start to be thin. So we can place our hands under the perineum to help their help our patients build that proprioceptive awareness. Mm -hmm. So this simple breathing and postural alignment exercise can help your patient to release that pubococcygeus, puborectalis, and it would help. It's also going to help to put the rectum into that optimal position. Mm -hmm. The other thing we spend a lot of time talking about is toileting position. So probably you've heard of the squatty potty, an option, but you can sort of create your own if you just place books or yoga blocks under your feet and you just slightly hinge forward at the hip with your feet elevated on blocks or books. You take a few deep breaths. Remember when you take those deep breaths, you're helping the rectum to drop down. Mm -hmm. The pelvic floor is going to drop and it's gonna make it a lot easier for your patient to pass the stool. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna encourage all of us nurse practitioners, instead of prescribing Colace, Metamucil, Miralax, try this first, see what happens. Have your patient come back in a week. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe. Please share with your colleagues, comment below to let us know your biggest challenges with treating constipation in your clinical practice. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide, four tips for managing your challenging pelvic exam, and you'll get access to our weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn where we'll post more pelvic health tips. We're super excited to also announce we're developing an online pelvic health course for nurse practitioners. Our course will break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize the field of pelvic floor health. We'll see you soon.